Are we ready for step five? How to answer an exam standard question in ten easy steps. Step five. Well, OK, what we now want to do is to write our answer to part A. Pretty simple stuff. We've already got our plan. We already know the information that's going to go into our plan. Here are my rules about how I don't upset the examiner. So, I work on the basis that one sentence will score you one mark. Now, of course, you could say, well, Rob, it depends on how much to write in the sentence. Well, of course it does. Some people may be able to score three marks in a sentence. Others could quite easily write sentence after sentence, scoring no marks. All I'm suggesting is that if you can get a fact in relation to the question down on paper in each sentence, this is a sensible observation. One sentence, one mark. Secondly, I want a header for everything. Because I want the examiner, or probably the marker, to... Know what you're talking about before they write the nonsense that you've written. OK? Thirdly, write more and more and more. When I set my students a task, most of them finish the written parts well before the time allocation. You have got the time, but write and write and write. Write until your hand falls off and then start writing with the other hand. And four, if possible, number off. If you're given the opportunity to say one, two, three, four, five, why not do it? Because that effectively is telling the examiner that you've got one, two, three, four, five solid points that deserve a mark allocation. You are educating the examiner as to how he or she should mark your script. So here is my suggested answer. I'll tell you it's not a perfect answer. It is supposed to be a solid worked answer that will score some marks. Notice, header, performance of production director. That's what it's all about. Header, new supplier. Remember back, I said I wanted to talk about two things, new supplier and de-skilling. So I make it easy to mark. The new supplier has managed to supply cheaper wood, leading to a favourable price variance of 5,100. Very much setting the scene. Has that scored a mark? Not quite sure if it has. It's more a statement of fact. But by making that statement of fact, it's easier, us, easier for us to score marks subsequently. This action has increased material usage, presumably due to excess wastage. And the net material variance is 2,400 adverse, suggesting that this was a poor move. Well, OK, two things I've done there that are very importantly. One, I have suggested something, presumably due to excessive wastage. And the other thing is I have had an opinion about something. I've said this was a poor move. OK? So, you have to suggest things. You don't know for certain, but based on the information that you've got there, you have to have an opinion. Reading on. Further, poor quality has had an adverse impact on labour efficiency, and probably most importantly, has damaged the reputation for quality that the company has built up. Again, notice, uh, I've put my opinion in there. I said probably most importantly, what I'm doing here is I've decided that there's a hierarchy of importance to what this is telling us. And then finally, very simple last point. Assessment underlined the production director has done a poor job. Remember the requirement in the question. The requirement in the question said, assess. OK? And that's what I've tried to do. I've given an assessment. So I've weighed things up with a few ideas at the top, and then I've given my assessment. Here, I think the production, production director has done pretty poorly. OK, so maybe we've got one, two, three, four marks, something like that. OK? Maybe not. But if you've got three marks here, and this must be worth three marks somewhere, would you be happy? If you've got three and three and six out of seven, would you be happy? I think most of us would be deliriously happy. Wouldn't you agree? OK. So here's my second attempt, de-skilling labour. OK, got slightly more warmed up here. So hopefully it's slightly better. Moving to lower skilled labour has the effect of reducing substantially the labour rate and saving 43,600 over budget. OK, so it sounds good. As a result, however, the company has suffered idle time costs required to train the new staff. Now, I don't know if you remember, but before I said idle time is normally separate. But here we were given a specific hint that the idle time was needed for training. 
Therefore, his decision has led to an idle time cost and poorer efficiency. There must be marks there. The net impact, also affected by poorer quality material, is 10,600 adverse variants to budget. The poorer quality finish arising from using this labour may also be a contributory factor in the higher returns. Assessment. Well, not exactly much of an assessment, but I've made one. Very important. We were asked to assess. The production director has done a poor job. Full stop. Let's hope we get a mark for it. So, my suggestion is that there are five solid points there. You may disagree, but there must be enough to get a solid pass mark. Okay? Remember, write more, write more, write more. Look at that as presentation. Would it be easy for you to achieve that presentation? I think it's quite easy, handwriting aside. Um, would it be easy for the marker or examiner to mark this? Well, most definitely, I left a line gap each time to give them the opportunity to tick and give you that mark. Okay? Make it easy to score marks. So, summary. Written parts are often easier than computations. You guys tend to get excited about computations. I don't. Yeah, we want to score something on the computations, but the written parts are often easier. Early marks should always be easy, even if it's a tricky point, and I don't think this was. You should be able to score something by making some basic observations. And have you noticed how much planning went into this? Maybe too much in this particular case. I want you to consider planning your written parts just as you would a computational part.